So again, welcome to the Magnetic Resonance Imaging Information Session. My name is Erin Ruggieri, and I'm one of the marketing coordinators with the School of Health Sciences at BCIT. And I'm joined tonight by Ray Lee, the program head for MRI, and he's going to be doing the bulk of our presentation, and I'll be inserting some information here and there. Just say that the British Columbia Institute of Technology acknowledges that our campuses are located on the unceded traditional territories of the Coast Salish nations of the Squamish, tsleil and Musqueam. So our agenda this evening is the welcome and introductions, what I'm doing right now. We're going to do a quick poll about MRI, and then we'll have our presentation and program overview with information about our program advising department. And then we'll have our Q&A at the end, as I mentioned. Okay, I'm going to end polling. I'm going to share the results there, and Ray can tell us who's right. All right, great job, everyone. Uh, so the correct answer is the majority answer here, so earplugs. So if you uh, select the earplugs, great job. Uh, so thank you, Erin. Uh, I want to also welcome and thank everyone for being able to join us uh, this evening. Uh, so my name is Ray. I'm the program head for the Magnetic Resonance Imaging programs at BCIT. Um, I'll be kind of leading the presentation today and uh, hopefully uh, we'll be able to provide some great information and to also be able to answer uh, any questions that you may have. So earplugs are given to patients as the uh, MRI machine is uh, very loud. Uh, so we try and protect our patients hearing uh, by giving them earplugs and also headphones. Uh, to help cut out some of that noise and the headphones are actually are, are also dual purpose where uh, we can also play them some music to help kind of uh, relax the patient and to get them through their uh, somewhat long MRI scan. So next slide here is what exactly is MRI. Uh, so we're hoping that you're able to do a little bit of a research before coming to today's uh, info session. But uh, just to give you a quick background of what MRI or magnetic resonance imaging is, is that it's a quite a fast growing uh, modality uh, as it was only um, developed in the 1980s. Uh, it's really great for uh, imaging soft tissue structures, organs, uh, neurological uh, studies, uh, looking at pathology. Uh, MRI can be done to image uh, everything from uh, head to toe. So it's a, a really robust uh, modality. Uh, the images are quite high resolution and they can be acquired in different planes, just like CT, if you're kind of uh, um, familiar with that modality itself. Uh, how the technology works and how it gets its pictures is that it uses magnetic fields and radio frequencies to acquire the images. So as you can see in that picture, uh, we get our patients onto the table and then they go into the MRI machine and then uh, coupling um, the magnetic field and the radio frequencies then we're able to acquire images of the patient. Uh, like I said, in very high resolution, in different planes, uh, we can make the pictures look uh, in certain ways. Like if we're looking uh, for fat to be dark or bright, we can um, change our parameters, which is a MRI technologist's kind of duty uh, to kind of uh, produce images that are gonna be able to diagnose um, uh, pathologies uh, and for the radiologist who's a doctor that looks at the images to make their diagnosis. One of the great um, benefits of MRI compared to X-ray or CT, if you've looked into those other modalities, is that MRI uses uh, no ionizing radiation. So that's great for the patient's kind of health and safety, where uh, it's really good for follow-up or multiple um, scans for the patient if they're, uh, if they're going through um, pathology uh, or cancer treatments and we want to follow up with them, then that allows us to image the same spot over and over again and have you know people come in every three to six months and not being able and not using ionizing radiation uh, to acquire these images and it's also really safe for the MRI technologist because then there's no risk of radiation exposure. So today uh, we are going to be uh, describing two different program pathways um, so we're really excited that you could join us just because we have something new coming up. <clears throat> So on the next slide, you'll see that the two program pathways are the advanced certificate and the uh, newly approved diploma program. So the advanced certificate are going to be for those of you who are already working uh, in a, another imaging modality. So as you can see there, if you're a sonography, medical radiography, nuclear medicine or radiation therapy technologist, then the advanced certificate would be for you. Uh, this is all done online as a part-time studies program at BCIT. 
And then the other stream is our diploma program, which are for those who may not possess uh, any um, um, any healthcare experience, you do not have a uh, imaging diploma. So this is going to be an in-person full-time program uh, for you to obtain your diploma in MRI uh, imaging. Um, so first we are going to jump into the MRI advanced certificate and then we'll go into the specifics of the MRI diploma. So on the next slide, um, you'll see that there are some pieces of criteria that you should consider uh, before applying. So for the MRI advanced certificate, um, if you're interested in advancing your career, so this would be another modality on top of the four previous ones mentioned. Uh, if you're going to be able to work independently or as part of a team, that's really important, uh, just because as an MRI technologist, there may be times where you will be working by yourself or as part of a, of a, of a larger uh, healthcare team. And if you're going to be able to work under pressure, um, as stated below, uh, before you're going to need a diploma degree in one of the other imaging, um, uh, uh, imaging programs. And you're also going to have to have active registration with CMRT or Sonography Canada, and you're also going to uh, be um, you're also going to have to fill out an MRI screening form, uh, which will then hopefully um, ensure that you're safe to work in the environment and that you're actually able to work as an MRI technologist when you graduate. Um, so uh, there is tremendous growth in MRI. Like I said, there's lots of job opportunities, but these are all things that you should consider before applying for the program. Uh, MRI scanners are um, are 24 seven at, at some sites, so you must be available to do some shift work. Um, like I said, to be able to work independently during these off hour shifts uh, and to also work as a collaborative team uh, during the day shifts. Uh, in terms of being able to work under pressure, uh, there are some larger uh, trauma sites uh, where they have MRI departments um, that deal with acute uh, patients, uh, patients who have been through traumatic experiences or strokes or um, ICU patients uh, will uh, frequent the MRI department. So being able to work outside uh, uh, other healthcare workers as a team and to be able to provide that, um, that, that care whilst they're working under pressure is uh, something to definitely consider. And um, patients uh, in the MRI environment uh, are, are somewhat uh, claustrophobic, they may be anxious, they may be sick. Um, so it is a fine balance between efficiency and patient care. Uh, and we do um, uh, like students coming in to have excellent communication skills to help patients kind of uh, guide through, guide patients through that process of getting the MRI scan. So we'll go over the MRI screening uh, form a little bit more in depth as we go into the program um, requirements. Uh, so on the next slide, <clears throat> you'll see uh, the program overview. So as uh, previously stated, it's a part-time online program. Uh, there is a 16-week clinical term uh, at one of the uh, hospitals. Um, if you are from outside of BC, uh, you are able to complete your clinical uh, term uh, at a site near where you live. You don't have to come out to BC to do that, uh, which, which creates that flexibility of, a part -time, of our part-time studies program. Uh, we have six online courses that you'll have to take before your clinical term. And after you um, complete the event certificate, uh, you are um, uh, able to also ladder into the Black Bachelors of Health Science that we have at BCIT. And uh, that is an additional seven core component courses that in combination with the advanced certificate and in combination with your previous imaging diploma, will have enough credits then to award you uh, the Bachelor's of Health Science. So that's a great option for those of you who do not have a bachelor's um, and that you're looking to obtain this type of credential. Um, so at BCIT, this is um, one of the only schools uh, which you can ladder into um, this type of credential after your advanced certificate. So on the next slide here, we're going, we'll go into a little bit of um, the entrance requirements, a little more in depth. So for the English requirement, you'll need two years of education in English. Um, for the post-secondary education, as previously stated, we're going to need a diploma or a degree in one of the following uh, imaging modalities. So once again, medical radiography, which is x-ray, nuclear medicine, uh, sonography, which is ultrasound, and radiation therapy. Um, for those of you who do not have any of this post-secondary education, that's, then that's where the, the uh, first discipline MRI program 
uh, diploma program uh, will be for yourself. So we'll go into that in a few slides. Uh, the other non-academic uh, entrance requirements that will be on the next slide will include the MRI uh, safety screening form. So once again, it's just to make sure that you are going to be able to work in the MRI environment, that there's something that is not going to allow you to uh, work as an MRI technologist, and that you have to have proof of current active registration with CMRT or Sonography Canada to prove that you do have the designation required to write the uh, the certification exam for the uh, MRI program once you have graduated uh, from BCIT. So some of the program details uh, is that there are three intakes throughout the uh, year. So there's a winter, spring, and fall term. And you can see that these are the months that they start. So we start January, April, and September. Uh, the application period is all year round. So you'll find that um, you're going to be able to apply um, to one of these terms where it kind of fits uh, within your, you know, outside of work life. Um, the maximum time to complete the program uh, will most likely change from the seven years to three years uh, very shortly. So it's just something to keep in mind that if you're planning on applying into this advanced certificate program is that we are trying to kind of shorten the time so that we can uh, tie your uh, academics to your clinical studies a little bit better and to also uh, ensure that you can uh, graduate from the program a little bit quicker as there is a, a great need for MRI technologists and there's a lot of open jobs right now. So the faster that you can kind of work yourself through the program, it will be better for uh, employment. Um, so the uh, typical timeline of how students go through the program is that they generally complete the theory didactic courses within two years. And then you can then shortly uh, enroll into that 16 week clinical term. Uh, and then um, shortly after then we would be able then to register and write the CMRT uh, certification exam for the MRI um, uh, discipline. Um, so that's kind of the pathway of a kind of uh, typical student through the advanced certificate program. So Aaron's just going to talk about the application steps and what is required there. Thank you, Ray. Uh, so one thing to note is that all of our applications are now done fully online. Uh, so everything's electronic. So we need you to go on our website, review the requirements and the application dates, complete all the required forms. Those are all linked on our website, convert all your documents to PDF files, and then upload that to our website, apply online at bcit.ca. Now the application fee uh, for domestic students is $90. So that will be a need to be submitted along with your application, but again, online. So the specific academic entrance requirements, two years of full-time education in English in an English speaking country, English studies 12 at at least 67% or three credits of post-secondary English humanities or social studies 67%. We really just need these two uh, first two ones because in anything in healthcare, you're going to need to have good communication skills. You're going to need to speak uh, efficiently in English with your patients. Um, so that's a, a must have. And then as Ray mentioned, post-secondary education, a diploma, degree, equivalent accredited program in either medical radiography, nuclear medicine, sonography, or radiation therapy. And as Ray mentioned, the non-academic requirements are the MRI safety screening form and proof of active registration with the CAMRT. The admissions process, so that's what you did on your end. Now on our end at BCIT, our admissions department receives your application, reviews it, checks off that you've met all the requirements, and then they forward all the applications that have met the requirements to the MRI department. The MRI department then reviews the documents and chooses the most successful applicants and sends application acceptance letters to applicants. They, uh, you must pay the commitment fee once you receive that acceptance. And I believe the commitment fee is $500. And that goes towards your tuition. Ray, do you wanna start talking about the diploma program next? Yeah, definitely. Um, just to address just a quick question in the chat, there is no interview for the advanced certificate, uh, but that kind of goes into a great segue into the, uh, diploma, uh, because things differ with the admission process with the, the MRI diploma. So the MRI diploma, like I said, is a brand new credential at BCIT. 
uh, will be the second um, institute across Canada to offer a first discipline MRI uh, uh, diploma program. So we're quite excited to get this started. Uh, so uh, it is a two-year full-time program uh, with one year of academic on campus and one year of clinical experience um, to make up the two-year diploma program. Uh, clinical placements will be offered uh, throughout BC and uh, the program is reserved for BC residents only and uh, it will be a 12-seat cohort starting in January 2023. So uh, next slide kind of goes into when the start date is, as previously mentioned, uh, the application period uh, is uh, open now. Uh, it will be open until May 15th, as of right now. Uh, you will have to submit a complete application, which includes all the, uh, all the documents and forms that are on the program webpage uh, by the deadline date. Um, and we'll kind of go into the specifics of what these uh, entrance requirements are in a future slide. So uh, the next slide, uh, once again, is a application um, in terms of what steps we need. So I'll let Aaron talk about that. And you'll notice that there are some differences between the application steps for the diploma versus the advanced certificate. Yes, so as I mentioned before, everything is done online. So that's the same for the advanced certificate and the diploma. But with the diploma, we have added this additional step of completing CASPER. Now, CASPER is an online non-BCIT uh, testing uh, company. If you Google CASPER, you'll come up and also their link on our website. Uh, they have a, it's, it's a situational personality, uh, moral questionnaire that you fill out. Um, and it's not something that you can study for. It's something you can prepare for, but they have all the information on their website as to how to prepare for it. They have sample tests for you to look at. Uh, so what you need to do is before the application deadline, you need to sign up for one of their testing dates and register for that to make sure you have that done in time for the application. Uh, as Ray mentioned, you have up until the deadline to apply to the program. There's nothing gained by applying early for the diploma, because you do want to make sure you have the best application possible and all your documents in order. So you, there is no first come first serve for this program. It is competitive entry, so you have right until May 15th. It was May 15th, right? Yes, May 15th to uh, submit your application online. I'm trying to see if there's anything else. Nope, that covers it for that one. So the you academic- want to go this, Aaron, or? You want to go for this? Okay, go for it. Yeah, uh, just because just I was actually uh, tackling this today. So I think um, um, I can kind of explain the forms as well. So all the uh, academic entry requirements on the left column there, um, all this information is found on the program website, but you'll notice that there are differences here. So we have the English um, grade 12, uh, the, the pre-calculus math uh, 12, physics 12, and anatomy and physiology 12, all with a 73% uh, mark in those, or uh, the equivalency of the post-secondary course are all going to be um, accepted. Uh, your non-academic requirements, uh, there are four uh, items here. So once again, the MRI safety screening form, uh, which is the same form used for the advanced certificate. So I won't uh, talk too much about that. Uh, the other three points are different. So we have the physical uh, and program requirements form. So that uh, just outlines the program, physical requirements to be successful in the program and in your clinical setting. Um, and it also gives uh, kind of the outline of clinical placements criteria. So it just gives you an idea of what, what the clinical requirements and expectations are in terms of uh, being placed uh, in different places, transportation, uh, any costs associated with that would be the, uh, the student's responsibility. Uh, the mandatory applicant questionnaire uh, is a form for you to fill out, uh, kind of indicating reasons for you selecting the program, what your personal strengths are, uh, any related experience that you can talk about, and uh, a description of any post-secondary -sec uh, education that you may possess. And then, like Aaron said, we have the CASPER uh, portion, uh, which tests um, 10 uh, crucial uh, competencies. Uh, that a healthcare worker should have. Um, so that for the CASPER right dates, you can find more information on the program website, but essentially you will have to register for a CASPER right date. 
um, in order to write the Casper uh, exam. And then there's also another smaller piece that will accompany that is called Snapshot, which is done by the same company, which is a short 10 to 15 minutes uh, recording of you answering uh, three questions that once again uh, are based on competencies that a healthcare worker should have. So uh, please go to the program website for more information about how you can create an account and register for your Casper rights. Um, as of right now, we have three rights that will fit within the application deadline, uh, and they are March the 6th, April the 5th, and May the 3rd, uh, and the times can be found on their website. And then uh, maybe I'll pass it back to Aaron for the next couple of slides about admissions and transcripts. Sure thing. Here we go. So when you have those documents, this is something important to note. I did say it was all online. Please do not mail transcripts to us. It's not recommended only if there's extenuating circumstances. We don't need to see hard copies of things anymore. So option one, you can scan uh, or take a picture of your official transcript um, and then upload it. Or you can download your digital transcript from your previous schools and upload that straight to our system. Uh, official transcripts are not required if you have been a BCIT student before. If you have taken courses at BCIT, we already have those courses on our records and we don't need to see proof of things that you did with us because we've got that. So the admissions process is much the same. Uh, you submit your application, we review it, we choose the best applicant, we send acceptance letters to applicants, you pay the commitment fee. The reason we tell you this is that uh, we need you to know that you don't apply and then hear from us next day. There is a bit of a process that takes place for us to choose our class and to, and to work through those admission steps. And as we mentioned for the diploma program, we don't look at any of the applications until May 15th. So we don't, we don't let you in on a first come first serve basis. We wait till the close date and then we, we uh, choose from there. So uh, do let us have a bit of time and don't get too anxious about that process. Thanks. Ray, do you want to talk about career outlook for MRI techs? Yeah, so kind of the reoccurring theme uh, is that there are a lot of MRI technologist jobs out there right now. A lot of um, a lot of hospitals are uh, they have lots of postings. Uh, it has uh, affected kind of operational um, hours at hospitals just because they're so short. So as of this afternoon, there are currently thirty jobs in the Lower Mainland and forty five jobs throughout BC that are unfilled right now. So this is a very opportunistic time for you to get into either the advanced certificate or the diploma uh, and to get out there and uh, contribute to, um, to the MRI departments out there uh, through LPC. Um, so the MRI scanners uh, can be found in hospitals, clinics and research facilities. So you don't have to work just at a hospital, right? There are different avenues where you can take your education that you get from BCIT and apply it to different um, uh, uh, healthcare uh, settings. Uh, in terms of pay, if you're interested in that, uh, MRI technologists uh, start off at a wage of generally $36 an hour and go up to about $44 an hour uh, at the hospital. And if you work at a private clinic, uh, the pay is generally a little bit higher than that but we tend to say about $36 to about $44 is kind of the range of uh, the uh, pay, uh, hourly pay for an MRI technologist. So our next slide, uh, we have um, Harmon, uh, which is a recent uh, MRI advanced certificate graduate, um, uh, very recently uh, this past term. So I'd like to pass it to him uh, to kind of talk about what his experience was like uh, 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 going to BCIT and maybe uh, he can speak uh, to how his uh, clinical experience was and maybe how that's impacted, um, um, uh, impacted, I guess, like how he's doing now. Uh, hello everyone. So for me, I chose MRI at BCIT um, because the institution has never failed me to provide the best education in the health science field. Um, I also studied X-ray and, and a bit of CT at BCIT uh, and I found those training programs to be very well organized and a lot of support from the instructors. So deciding to go with BCIT for my MRI program was a no brainer. 
Um, overall, what I can say is that the MRI course was very organized. Um, there's a lot of instructor help. So if you ever need help regarding a concept or a ideology, there's uh, help across the online as well as instructor help. Um, they also give you plenty of resources such as practice tests, which also helped me uh, when I was studying because it helped point out my weaknesses and strengths. Um, lastly, I'd say that the practicum portion was also very helpful because that's when you get to fine tune the concepts that you learned with uh, real life scenarios. Uh, and you get to fully experience being a MRI tech. Uh, other than that, I did really enjoy my clinical term and, my, and the program at BCIT. And I'm a recent grad now, so that worked out really well. Awesome, great, Harmon. Appreciate that. Um, so the next few slides, uh, once again, I'm just going to pass it over to Erin to give a little bit more information about this. Thanks, Ray. Yeah, so this slide is about uh, supporting your success once you are a student at BCIT. And uh, this journey doesn't end with you getting accepted to BCIT. We recognize that post-secondary can be uh, a bit of a heavy load for many students, and it can be a really interesting time in your life. So we want to support you through that. So I'm going to talk about just a few supports we have at BCIT. Our first one is Indigenous initiatives. And for students who are Indigenous and come to BCIT, uh, the Indigenous initiatives group offers uh, peer, to peer mentoring, uh, a welcoming gathering place, uh, and information on Indigenous funding. So there's lots of ways to connect with them. Uh, they have been offering some really cool workshops over the last couple months too that have been fascinating, I found. Uh, student financial aid and awards. Uh, so if you have questions about how to fund your education, how you're going to pay for this, Student Financial Aid and Awards can help you out. They have information on awards, bursaries, loans, uh, so you can chat with them and they can give you some great tips there. Accessibility services. So if you have a permanent or temporary disability that might mean you need some accommodations in the program as you study, we urge you to contact Accessibility Services and they are a great resource. As soon as you get accepted to a program, you should connect with them and see uh, what they can do to help you out because they'll liaise with the program and, and really do a great job for you. Student Health Services, we have a full service health clinic here on the Burnaby campus. It's really handy to have here. Uh, you can probably get an appointment uh, quicker with the doctor at the Burnaby campus sometimes than you can with your own family doctor or the clinic near your house. Uh, so it's just a great resource. They are, it's a full service clinic, just like any uh, medical clinic you'd find in your neighborhood. Uh, and they're just conveniently located right beside our gym. Counseling and student development is there to support your mental and emotional well-being during your studies. We don't want to leave that uh, forgotten and we want to care, help you through that journey as well. So anytime you need, you can book in with a counselor or a psychologist on the, on the Burnaby campus. And lastly on this slide, recreation services. We have a full service gym at the Burnaby campus. Uh, we have intramurals, we have uh, fitness classes. You can go there before classes, after classes on your lunch break. Just a great way to blow off some steam and kind of get your mind away from your studies for a minute and contact, uh, focus on your uh, physical health. And then program advising. So program advising is a great resource as you uh, begin to plan your journey at BCIT. Ray can answer all your questions about MRI as a profession and the MRI program, but if you have questions about, uh, does this course on my transcript match up with this prerequisite? Uh, should I take this program or this program, which is better suited to me? Program advising is who you wanna to go to. So they have telephone advising, uh, Zoom and in-person times and hours, and you can email them at program underscore advising at bcit.ca. Now, as I look at this slide, I realize the times for the on-campus advising are actually incorrect. That's in the afternoon now, not in the mornings. So for up-to-date and current information, always go to our website, uh, bcit.ca slash advising is where you'll find their information. And as you uh, decide what to do with your future and where to take your career path and your education, we want to, you to keep in touch with us and connect with us. So we are active on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and LinkedIn. And you can like, follow, or send us a message on any of those channels and we'll connect back with you. Uh, there's also other ways to learn more about our Burnaby campus and about our programs that you can check out here, but the most important one on this list is the info sessions, and you're already at one of those. So we thank you for 
coming out and joining us tonight. This is great to see you all here. And with that, I'm going to proceed to some questions and answers. And I see there's some links being put into the chat. Thank you, Ray, for those. Now, I'm really excited about this new diploma program we're offering. This is the first time we're offering a program to people who don't have previous health work healthcare experience and, and are coming in fresh to it. And it's very exciting to be able to get people out. I know I actually have been waiting for an MRI for quite a while, Ray. So I would really like you to pump out some more graduates so I could get that appointment done, please. Yeah, well, maybe Harvin can do it now for you, so. Okay, we'll connect after. Um, yeah. <laughs> so if anyone has any questions, you're welcome mm -hmm. to unmute yourself and just go ahead and ask it or type it into the chat, whichever works best for you. Anybody? Oh, uh, hi. Hi, Dave. Um, Ray and Aaron. I have hey. a question specifically about Casper. Um, so if I had previously submitted Casper for another health science program, do I still need to resubmit it specifically for MR for the MRI program? Yeah. And so the reason why I, I ask that, sorry to interrupt you, okay. but the reason why I ask that is because I try to uh, distribute the my Casper result specifically for the MRI program, and it wouldn't allow me. It's not highlighted, and I was wondering if it's because I have already sent it into BCIT for another health science program. Yeah. Okay. So from what I know, because uh, I actually had a, a talk with Casper today, is is that um, you should be able to um, distribute your Casper mark to the MRI program. Uh, they charge, I think, twelve dollars uh, if you've already, um, you know, for, for for every program that you want to use that Casper right for, they charge twelve dollars um, as long as it's in the same cycle. So the cycle would have been good from September, 2021 until now. So if you've written the CASPER exam for a different um, uh, health program at BCIT, you should be able to distribute it to us. Um, we should be on the website. So it, depending on how, uh, when you tried uh, as of today, it was up. So you should be able to kind of find where we are now um, and be- um, Because I just, I. I think I log in to my Casper account today um, mm -hmm. to uh, go to my Casper result that was specifically for the health science program. Mm -hmm. um, and it was MRI along with uh, many other um, health science program were not highlighted. And I mm -hmm. have actually raised that issue with, the, uh, with Casper um, okay. and I show them the print screen and they said that they will try to get that fixed. But it seems like if you had already written Casper and have already submitted the result to any of the um, health science program at BCIT, for some reason, you cannot um, redistribute the result for an other, like, um, let's say I apply for sonography already, and then I try to resubmit uh, or redistribute the result to MRI, it's, it's not there. Oh. Hey, can, I ask when, can I ask when you wrote the Casper? Oh, it's actually October last year. So it is for the 2021 yeah. cycle. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, that would be an error on their website then because, uh, it is. yeah, so let's, let's wait and see what their help desk says. Okay, okay, yeah. let's, okay, thanks. Yeah, but there should be no issues from what you're telling me. Like, it seems like everything should be fine. So like Aaron said, I think it'd be best to uh, have Casper kind of deal with that on their end because right. it's not okay. an issue there. Uh, let's go to the chat here. So yeah, thanks Marvin for uh, coming tonight. Uh, so transfer related diploma specifically to other nations. So that's an interesting one. It, it really depends on if the, uh, the place that you're transferring to recognizes it. I know that when we are looking at our second discipline program, we have uh, various students come from different schools. And uh, generally, if it's outside of the country, uh, there's some sort of um, equivalency um, review that has to be done to make sure that the diploma that they've received uh, is equivalent to what we would have taught here curriculum wise in order for it to transfer over. So really, that's a question for the receiving institute if they would want if, if they're going to allow the your credential to kind of carry over. Uh, Aaron, does that sound about right? Because that's from my experience, that's... Yes, that's correct. Yeah. Um, I was answering a question to uh, Simrat Parhar. 
uh, wondering when the diploma option opens online. The applications are, are now open. We mm. just got the program approved uh, late Friday. So it just got up online on Monday afternoon. And we're just working at highlighting it on our webpage. So right now it might be <laughs> bit hard to find it unfortunately. Ray, do you happen to have a link to the uh, diploma program that you could pop into the chat? Yeah, that's the second link that I put in. The first link is uh, for good. the event yes. and the second one's diploma. So hopefully if you click on that link, that should bring you because if you do a Google search, it actually doesn't show up anywhere. You almost have to go into the uh, School of Health Sciences programs in the BCIT website to find this program. It's something yeah. that doesn't show up on the Google search for, yeah, for some I reason. I, I've been working on web stuff with this as we've been doing info sessions this week. So we're just a little bit behind because this is a brand new program. You guys are the first group told about this. So it is it's very new and exciting for us. Yeah, but if you follow the link, you should be able to get there. Um, Mohammed, you said you had a question. Oh, wait, he got kicked out and came back in. Okay, we'll give Mohammed a second to get back into the session. Looks like his computer had a problem there. And Ray, is the diploma program something that people can apply for or apply for right out of high school? Yes. So the entrance, the academic requirements are high school, um, are high school entrance requirements. Uh, it is a competitive process. So any post-secondary um, education that you may have does kind of come to play in terms of when we're trying to select applicants. Um, not saying that all of our students are, have to have post-secondary education, but it's something that you could be shortlisted for. But there is a reason why that there are just high school entry requirements is that we are expecting uh, people coming straight out of high school to uh, want to come and take this program. Um, you know, so post-secondary education is definitely not a requirement, um, but it's something that is uh, good to have. Great, thank you. Paula has a question. For the Paula. advanced certificate, if I apply for the program now, can I start the courses at a later time? Example, apply now and start my first course January. Hmm. Good question. Uh, generally, when you are putting in your application, uh, you have to specify which term you want to start. So if you're looking to apply now, but not, uh, but kind of deferring when you start, um, I don't think that's an issue, but you just may get emails telling you every term that okay you can register for a course because you're within the advanced certificate program um, but there is no harm in applying for the term that you want to eventually start in so in january 2023 if that's when you're planning to start um, there are going to be spaces available for you to apply into so don't feel like you have to you know, pay the application fee now because there may not be spots later. Uh, generally, students apply for the term that they are planning on starting their studies. Thank you, Ray. Mohammed, are you on the call? Um, did you want to? Yes. Yes. May I ask a question, please? Yes. Go ahead, please. Uh, thank you. Um, um, uh, I came to Canada two years ago, and uh, I graduated. In 2014 from medical school back home in my country. Uh, I have a degree, bachelor degree in medicine and general surgery. Uh, so if I want to join this program, should I study like physics, mathematics, something like that from the beginning? Uh, I couldn't join the physician program here because it's quite a bit complicated uh, in Canada. It needs a lot of stuff to be a medical doctor here, uh, which I cannot, uh, I cannot get that at this time. So I find myself, it's the first step if I can back to medicine from this program. So should I study mathematics and physics, something, all of this, all of these things? Yes, so if you are thinking about the diploma program where you're going to need the, you know, the five-year recency of the, academic um, entrance requirements, yes, then you would have to retake those courses that are listed on the program website for the academic um, entrance requirements. So that would include the English, the math, the physics, and the biology portion. 
how long it would take? Uh, it really depends. I mean, like these are things that you would enroll uh, through, uh, I think, uh, you know, like um, continuing education, Aaron, correct, correct me if I'm wrong, but you would enroll in these courses and take them. You know, I know they have like evening classes, weekend classes, day classes, and then you would kind of have to then retake those courses and with the 73% mark. Uh, and then, then, then you would have all the academic prerequisites to apply for the diploma program. That's right, right. Continuing education, you would do that through your local school district. So depending on what city you live in, uh, for me, I live in Coquitlam, so I can access Coquitlam continuing education. So you can just type that in to Google and see what you come up with there uh, for your city. Um, and they offer uh, all these high school prerequisites uh, for free. And not only do they have day, evening, weekend courses, they also have them online now as well. So you can look there and see how quickly they offer those and how you can do that through them because each city does it a bit differently through the continuing education department. Um, cool. One other thing I would suggest, Mohammed, is I would suggest contacting program advising because they can give you information about a number of different health programs and how to uh, most easily kind of get uh, set up to uh, be successful in taking one of those. I and program advising's that. emails on the screen there. Yeah, thank and, you. Yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. and Erin, I, I guess like our, the BCIT also provides courses that are the equivalencies. Is that also correct? I Not for remember. all of them. Um, so we do have them. our anatomy and physiology in our basic health sciences yeah. department here, but we don't. So uh, things like your grade 11 math or your, your physics, you would need to do those outside. Mm. Correct. Yes. yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. You're Absolutely. welcome. Um, sorry, I just wanted to build up on a point as well. Um, so for those applicants that are coming out of high school or outside fields, um, I think it would also be beneficial for them to kind of get some um, volunteer experience in a healthcare setting, um, just because it'll teach you essential skills such as empathy and how to communicate with patients. Um, and it also will help bolster your application as well. That's a great point, Harvin. That's actually uh, listed on the website page uh, in terms of shortlisting criteria is volunteer experience or, you know, things like that, that you can prove that you've shown an interest in healthcare uh, outside of the application process. So yeah, that's a great point. And like you said, sometimes you think healthcare is for you until you get there. And then you're like, wait, this is not what I envisioned being in the hospital like. So um, yeah, I think that's a great way to kind of see the environment firsthand, see if you like it, see what it takes to be successful, see how the healthcare team works together and how they um, uh, offer you know, their patient care and things like that. So I think that's a great thing to do before applying. Wonderful, thanks. Do we have any other questions? I'm assuming Paula and Ray know each other from before or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if not, that would be a very funny uh, yeah, comment. Yeah, uh, Paula was a uh, x-ray student when I was uh, teaching in the x-ray department. Ah, yeah, people come to BCIT and you just keep coming back. <laughs> yeah, I guess we do a good job here. So no, that's great to see. We do. <laughs> okay, well... If there's no more questions, I just want to remind you of these email addresses on your screen. Uh, so if you have any questions about your transcripts, about how to apply program underscore advising, if you have any questions about MRI, about whether or not you are suitable for MRI, uh, what the career would be like, what the details of the program are like, rlee232 is Ray Lee's email address at BCIT. Uh, so you can definitely contact him and he'd be happy to help you out, right, Ray? Definitely. Definitely. And again, um, diploma program brand new. So please do tell your friends, family, anyone who you think might be interested in going into something like this. I was actually just texting with my uh, son's friend earlier this evening and telling her that she might want to consider this because she's in grade 12 now. Uh, so <laughs> well, you know, spread the word. This is exciting to be able to have this in our province and have this as a new option for people. Okay, thank you. Great. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for joining us again.